All right, what's up? This is Paul Friedman, Fossil Fool, coming at you from the special projects room at Rock the Bike, where I've been doing my inventing. And I wanted to take this moment on a Saturday to uh, show the different parts of the bike trailer uh, hitch and tow bar for the first mod, since there aren't a lot of guides out there for how to do this. I wanted to uh, fire up the scale and weigh the different parts so that you can get a sense of how strong things need to be depending on what loads are being towed by bicycle. Uh, so let's get into it. I've taken everything apart and uh, most things here are finger tight. Let's start with the two main structural parts of the tow bar. So this part is normally seen in the footage at uh, this angle if I'm towing. So each of these are um, made with Douglas fir and then layers and layers of uh, carbon fiber sleeving. And the carbon fiber sleeving is like a continuous sock that can expand and contract to different uh, forms. So if you take a nice piece of wood that's strong, like vertical grain Douglas fir that I purchased here in uh, the East Bay from McBeath uh, down the block, then you cover that with uh, maybe four layers on a piece like this, um, or maybe five. Something like that is probably what I did. Then you end up with an extremely strong bar that is uh, similar in strength to maybe like steel that has a 16th inch or an 8th inch wall. Um, so that's cool because it's um, probably a little bit lighter than the steel would have been. So this V-shaped piece is the lower member. It would be seen like this or this or this in the footage, depending on what I'm doing with the system. So the, the goal was to create a tow bar that had three functions, towing to the water, rolling around the dock, and especially lowering it down the boat ramp. The boat ramp is slippery. The boat is heavy. I don't want to be walking down to the, into the slippery part. I needed a system for lowering the boat to the water and that meant that I needed a caster. So in a, in a previous video, I've shown the making of this caster. There are threads embedded in the end of the tow bar. And then that all drops into the um, electric bike, which I'm going to show next. Right here, this is a very vulnerable um, part of the system. It seems to be doing well. It's a half inch uh, titanium bolt. Um, I did notice when I was taking it apart that my aluminum um, spacer has disintegrated, probably from galvanic corrosion. And it's, uh, it's a struggle to keep this all performing well in salt water. There needs to be a way of um, locking at the three different positions. So these three holes are the three different positions. The way that I came up with is this slider. And it works on all the holes. It's dry right now, and it usually slides a lot better when there's coconut oil on here. And I haven't applied that because I want to be able to work with my hands and not get greasy. But the performance is better with the coconut oil. It's smoother, nicer to use and goes into the three positions. This is the upper position. That's what I use for um, sailing because then it gets the caster out of the water. And in the future, I would like to use the end of the uh, uh, tow bar as a bowsprit and um, have a, a foresail. So let's take a closer look at the locking mechanism here because there's a, a swinging um, piece that comes down and prevents the the lever from um, accidentally lifting. And then to move to the next position, you pop it up, fold it down, slide, go into the next position, swing the lock mechanism down, 
and it goes all the way. And then there's very little play there, which is nice. There's a small amount of play between the slider and the main tow bar. And that amount of play I have been trying to keep to a minimum because that equates to um, extra bounce on the system when I'm biking down the street. So the reason why it slides kind of badly before the coconut oil is because I've been trying to build up the top of this to make it as tight as possible so that there's the least amount of play. So these needs are conflicting. So I want the least amount of play, but I also want it to slide uh, nicely so that I don't get frustrated by my own inventions when I'm using them. The slider has a very beefy um, member here that interfaces with this hole, and I'll put that together. It allows a certain amount of motion. This mechanism here has been pretty challenging, um, but also it's, it's, now, it's now working pretty well. So let's take a closer look at it. And normally for sliding, the lever is in. Slide it to the place where you want it. Use the lever, swing the pin, and that's a nice tight fit. And then there's going to be a locking thing that slides over. And it is a press fit, and it might be enough, but I just don't trust it because I'm, when I'm biking to the water, it's just constantly up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down. And that all gets transmitted to this area. So just this part of the system has three parts. Now I'm going to start weighing stuff because if this kind of video is going to benefit people, you got to know what things are made out of, how much to use, etc., etc. The lever itself four and a half ounces almost, 125 grams. It is made out of three materials. It's made of an aluminum um, bar that was bent at, the, at that point here. It's got a steel screw that got tapped into one of the aluminum pieces. And then I wrapped that with a bunch of uh, carbon fiber toe. It's got a wooden extension. So let's keep going with the way down. The uh, slider part, 10.3 ounces, and in grams, that is 293. Mostly carbon, but does have a embedded sheet of stainless steel in there. The force of the aluminum pin was um, basically crumbling the fibers, making it more and more sloppy. And so then I um, added a curved um, and I added a curved piece of metal, which the metal is strong enough to, to handle the force of the pin on that surface. And this is a, kind of an educational moment for my inventing, because as an inventor, I'm like, oh, OK, I got three holes. I need a pin. This pin needs to be strong. So I definitely made this pin strong. Now this locking pin uh, has been thickened. That's the process. You, you ride to the water. You see where things are starting to fall apart. Hopefully, you catch them before they cause a, a catastrophe. So this swinger mechanism, and there's the aluminum. It's got some carbon. It's got some glass. I switched to glass so that I could shine a light through it and see where to redrill the hole there. So this swinging mechanism is now wider. It, it was strong enough, but I needed to make it thicker so that when it hit the, um, the surface here that the, the force wasn't as focused on a little knife edge. I'm a little bit worried that this um, is not strong enough. So I might now upgrade the size of this because it has a slight wobble in it because of the forces that it has been under when I'm on my way to the water. So this is what I mean when I say that the process reveals what needs to happen next. The process reveals that a pin isn't strong enough, or a locking, or the pivot bolt isn't strong enough. And then you have to pay attention to that. Hopefully, there's enough room around it to redrill it, go to the next size up. And then eventually, you get to a point where the thing is just strong enough, and nothing breaks anymore. And that's Hopefully, hopefully where I'm at pretty soon. But now let's talk about one of the issues, which is that this locking pin, um, which does a great job of preventing 
the main pin from coming out. However, when you're biking down the road and there's bumps, what actually happens is that it's, just, it's an up-down motion. And in those up-down moments, the forces go from one direction to the other side, back to the other direction, back to the other side, and that is an opportunity for things to loosen. It's, it's hard to make it happen for the camera, but what I can say for sure is that this pin needs a pin. So now I have a pin that needs a pin, and this pin needs a pin, and here is what I've come up with. It is a small piece of carbon that was um, formed with sleeving over the lever itself. And when the, um, when the swinging pin is up, it needs to be here to allow using of the lever. And when the swinging thing is down, then you can slide this in. And it has a nice press fit. And it prevents the swinging pin from coming up. So it's a triple pin. And I'm actually now going to make a pin for this pin, because I am not joking around. I don't want this thing to vibrate backwards. And then when it vibrates backwards, allow this one to pop open, and then me having a problem in the middle of an intersection with cars coming. I'm not doing this for YouTube. I'm doing this for getting to the water safely by bike and replacing cars and trucks in my own life. And you can't go down the street to the bike shop and buy this stuff. So this is what the process has led to. So let's take a little bit more weight measurements here. So I'm going to weigh the main tow bar, 26 ounces, 745 grams, 3 quarters of a, of a kilogram. So this V-shaped member starting with the metric system, 685 grams, so a little bit less than this one, but same ballpark of strength. Switching back to English system, it is 24 ounces. The caster system, this one is also 24 ounces. Without the caster wheel, 11 ounces, 314 grams um, for the carbon fiber caster with the titanium bolt. I think that kind of covers it. So now let's move over to the folding bike. I made a um, carbon fiber box to house this battery. This is a 52 volt by 10 and a half amp hour battery. This amount of stored energy, a little over half a kilowatt hour, has been enough to get to and from the water twice. So that equates to about a 10 mile range while towing a 350 pound load over mostly flat ground. So that's pretty cool. The, uh, the carbon fiber case has some um, features that interface with the custom, customized rear aluminum rack. And it has a carbon fiber pin that goes in here. And it just pops in there. And then for the most possible security, I just use this extra little clicky thing right there and it won't vibrate loose. And it also allows me, if I'm concerned about leaving it for security reasons, to um, remove it. Let's take a look at how the caster interfaces with the, with the bike. There is a chunk of aluminum U-channel here with a beefy um, pin, because this area has actually been destroyed several times through normal riding forces. Um, and then there's a, also a, quite a beefy part here that has been remade several times. I will weigh it, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. This is something that could definitely be remade lighter. It could be made out of a chunk of aluminum, probably. And it actually has to come off in order to fit the folding bike inside the bow if I'm doing that sort of a mission. And you can see how, how um, tight the pin is, which is some which is something that I actually want because that means that uh, there's no slop there. The um, caster's um, pin then drops in and um, goes all the way. Can't come out because it's got a ball end. And then here's how the system works. So there's a um, titanium bolt going through some bearings there. That allows the tow bar to 
rotate because when I bicycle, I'm leaning a little bit to the side with each pedal stroke. Then for you know your typical turns, uh, that pin provides that axis of rotation. And then for coming down a curb and up the other side, that pin um, allows for that axis of rotation. That all begs the question of whether this whole area could be improved through a ball hitch, which is the typical way of doing this. And I think it could. I didn't follow that route because I was kind of excited about the ability to have dual functions, you know? So for example, when I lift the pin out, then fold this down, then it becomes a dock caster. That's been a really cool function for lowering the boat into the water. So the rack has been reinforced. It's been cut and re-welded and squeezed together to reduce the volume here. It's been shortened um, and then lengthened again to make room for the um, battery. But uh, basically, the, the amount that this comes up and out has everything to do with uh, whether the bike fits in the bow if I'm doing that sort of bike sailing mission. I am hoping that my videos and my adventures inspire lots of people to try out bike sailing. I know it's a niche um, and it's not going to save the world on its own, but it is part of a larger field that I call low carbon fun in which we as uh, the people who can afford to do things like buying SUVs, flying around the world, and um, leading a high carbon fun model, switch to low carbon fun, where low carbon fun is like maximizing one's adventure while not polluting the planet in our free time. So if we want to reduce carbon that's going into the atmosphere, it's a massive undertaking. It's like turning an aircraft carrier around. We're going to have to do it bit by bit. We're going to have to attack the problem from many different directions. And the direction that I have been wanting to focus on is how people have fun. So I am not here to say that um, driving into nature with a pickup truck, towing a quad, it, and then unloading the quad, and then driving the quad, which are all gas-burning vehicles, and then loading up the quad and driving home. I am not here to say that that's not fun. I believe that it is fun. I think quads are probably really fun. However, what I am here to say is that that message is already out there in our culture, very strong. People spreading the idea of that type of fun as being a good thing to do with one's free time. I'm here to spread a different type of fun, what I call low carbon fun, which is getting a sailboat, which is a wind powered vessel to the water by electric bike or even by regular bike and having a true adventure with it where you're going someplace, you need to use your skills, you need to um, have all the right pieces of gear so that you're safe and there is probably going to be some risk involved but like all good adventures that's the name of the game so you got to rely upon yourself like that's the type of fun that I want to put out there and bike sailing is just one example. I mean, you can just do so many different things. You can walk into nature. You can take photography, um, go bike camping. You know, I actually started a Facebook group called Low Carbon Fun. And it's, it's slowly getting off the ground, but I would encourage you to check it out and, and, and join it. Um, there's also a YouTube channel that we're thinking of building out called Low Carbon Fun. And so if you want to help this along, then, you know, do all the normal things like subscribe, share, comment, um, talk it up and spread the word. Because, uh, like I said, the, the high carbon fun is alive and well in our culture. And I'm not trying to guilt trip those people or tell them that that's not fun. I'm just trying to positively put out something else that is fun. Because if people hear about it, then it might be more of the type of fun that they want to have. But if they didn't hear about it, then they might never do it. So that's where you come in with uh, helping the algorithm um, bump this type of content to the top. And of course, because you can't just go to the store and get gear for bike sailing, you know, that's when you have to make uh, things that uh, do different things. And uh, so the, the, the process of actually making and inventing is also, for me, a lot of fun. 
And because I'm using carbon fiber, um, you know, uh, which is itself a fairly environmentally um, intense material. So the fibers, like the ones that are left over on my cutting table here, you know, this, this is actually not a fiber. This is many fibers. Okay, let me get the camera to focus. Oh, whatever. Each of those fibers comes out of an extruding machine, I think, but there's a very high degree of heat involved because you're, I don't really know how it's made. I just know that it's an industrial process that in, involves a lot of energy. So the embedded energy in something like this is quite high, which means that if you want to essentially do what I'm now leading you to do and make your own gear for low carbon fun, using carbon fiber because it's the best, strongest uh, material to make custom parts out of, then I want to help you waste less by getting up to speed with your engineering and problem solving sooner, get to the good stuff quicker. So I hope that these videos um, both capture my enthusiasm for making in carbon, but also help you along and maybe help you make one or two fewer mistakes in your process and uh, that you can get out into nature and enjoy your low carbon fun adventures. This has been another video on the Fossil Fool channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day and a great weekend. Thanks everybody.